Jesus is the answer for the world today. Hello, family. Pastor Lalu. Today we want to continue our chats on um, trials. And um, the idea in, in the context of spiritual maturity and the idea that trials, when it comes to maturity, are utilized by God or we are put through trials by God for an increase or growth in our faith and our reliance on Him. And um, today and last week, we touched on two, at least two trials that occurred that, that I mentioned in Scripture, one being that of Abraham. And the other being that of um, Job. Okay, so today I want to talk about that of Abraham specifically, which is found in Genesis chapter 22. And we're going to be reading specifically just verse 1, 2, 12, 16 through, an eight, through 18. It's just Genesis 22, 1 and 2, verse 12, verse 16 through 18. Okay. Genesis, from reading from the King James, Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. That's 1 and 2. Verse 12 says sorry and he said lay not thine hand upon the lad neither do anything unto him for now i know that thou fearest god seeing thou hast not withheld thy son thine only son from me and 16 through 18 says and said by myself have i sworn saith the lord for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So here, without getting too much into the story, I implore you to go and read Genesis chapter 22. But here we see that God called Abraham and said, take your son, your only son, whom you love. And we see right here, outright, that the Bible establishes that God chose to test Abraham. And said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go and sacrifice him upon the mountain that I will show you. And Abraham went and did that very thing. And we see that, yes, Abraham loved his son. This is this was his, he uh, was his heart, is a good word for it. In the sense of like, you know, this is something he longed for and God had provided. And now God comes along and says, hey, go and sacrifice that thing. And later in scripture, we see established that it's, it said that Abraham believed that in obeying God, God being God, being true to his word, that even if he were to sacrifice Isaac, God would raise him from the dead. Because this, it was the promised son, whom God said, hey, out of your seed, you know. And it's like, okay. So Abraham does it. He obeys. And the other portions of scripture we read here are where the angel of the Lord speaks from heaven. Tells Abraham, because Abraham was, took his hand, reached out his knife to the knife to sacrifice his son, the angel of the Lord says, stop. God provided the ram. And he said, because you have done this. You know, here in scriptures, it's written as, now I know. But we know God being omnipotent. Omniscient, rather. Right? It's not, it's not read as, now I know. We can read it more as, now Abraham, you know. Or rather, now that you have passed this test. Now that you have passed this test. See, that he fears God, that he is willing to do whatever it is God says, and he's willing to not withhold anything, even the thing he loved most dearest from God. 
And then we see the blessing that comes after that. And here, Abraham is where we see the name ascribed to God, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. And here, we see that Abraham's faith and trust in God increases drastically. Because the thing is, the fact that Abraham did not withhold what he loved most means that he trusted God and not just that he trusted God just outright say I trust but he trusted that God would be true to his word and if his word was that hey out of your from your descendants <clears throat> you know your descendants will multiply as a sand and the stars in the sky and the heavens and this was the son, the promise son that God had promised, that said, this out of this child, out of this seed, it shall happen. And therefore, God would remain true to his word. And the thing is, if we take this and think about it, we see that God tested Abraham. We see that Abraham's faith increased. We see that Abraham established and exhibited his faith in God. The question to each and every single one of us is this. Do we trust God enough? to let go of the thing we hold dearest. And in doing so, we are obeying the very first commandment that we will have no other God before him. That thing we hold dearest, if we withhold it from God, then we have placed that thing before God to say that this thing is of more importance, more value, and therefore is essentially my God. That's one. Do we trust God enough to let go of that very thing? Second, do we trust God enough to keep his word, to keep his promise? That if he has promised a thing, if he has said a thing, do we trust him enough to know that his word never returns to him void? Therefore, whatever he has said, he is sure to accomplish. That is what I'm walking away from thinking about this, or walking away with rather thinking about this. That am I immature enough? To trust my God? Am I mature enough to let go of the things that seem comfortable, the things that are dear to me? Am I mature enough to know that God is greater and better? And my prayer is that in every test I pass, that in every test you pass, that in every test we grow in faith, from faith to faith from glory to glory. Because in doing so, we draw closer and closer and we trust God more. And in that, honestly, is where we begin to find the peace that surpasses all understanding. God bless you. Have a blessed day.